So from our previous discussion, we discussed about the pharmacokinetics and we define it as the time course of drug absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So we abbreviate this as ADM. So pharmacokinetics will answer the question how the drug comes and goes out of the body. It will also answer the typical question what the body does to the drug. For those drugs that are administered orally, they follow the uh, LADME scheme in terms of their pharmacokinetic property. So the LADME describes the pharmacokinetic processes which follow a given dosage regimen. So the LADME is composed of liberation, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So the first step is liberation. So when we say liberation, that is the release of the drug from its dosage form. So this applies to the drugs that are given orally. The components of liberation are first, we have the release of the drug from the pill, the tablet, or the capsule. So for those drugs that are given orally, they are usually in the form of a pill, not a tablet, and a capsule. And this uh, here, this this uh, pill, tablet, and the capsule refers to the dosage form of the drug. So after that, the drug will undergo dissolution of the active drug in the GI fluid. So an example of the difference in the liberation is in the aspirin. So we have here an enteric-coated aspirin and a non-coated enteric uh, non aspirin. So for those drugs that are enteric-coated, or for those aspirin that is enteric-coated, they have a slow absorption compared to those aspirin that is not enteric-coated. So this enteric-coated uh, form of aspirin is an example of the dosage form of the drug. And it will affect the rate at which the drug will undergo the process of liberation or the process whereby the drug will be released from its dosage form in the GI fluid for eventual absorption. So when we say dosage form, these are the means by which the drug molecules are delivered to the sites of action within the body. So uh, our previous examples of our dosage form are our tablet, our capsule, and we also have our enteric-coated uh, drugs. So why do we need to have a dosage form? So dosage forms are important in order to provide the accurate dose of drug. It is also important for protection. So uh, example of this are the um, coated tablet and the sealed ampules. It is also important for protection from the gastric juice in the stomach. Dosage forms will mask the taste and the odor of the drug. It is important for the placement of the drug within the body tissues. It is also important for sustained and controlled release of the medication, especially in the GID. It is also important to achieve optimal drug action. And it is also important for the insertion of drugs into the body cavities. Example are the drugs that are given rectally and in the vagina. It can also be used uh, for as a desired vehicle for the uh, insoluble drugs. So the dosage forms can be classified according to the route of administration. So we have here the dosage forms that are given orally, topically, in the rectum, parenterally, in the vagina. Uh, we also have those that are inhaled in the eyes or ophthalmic and in the ears, otic. otic. The dosage forms can also be classified according to its physical form. So we also have we have those um, dosage forms that are solid. Now, so for example, we have the tablet, the capsule. We also have those that are semi-solid and liquid. After the liberation, we have the absorption. So when we say absorption, that is the movement of the drug from the site of administration to the blood or to the blood circulation. So we have here the different factors that will affect the rate of liberation and absorption of a particular drug. So um, 
the factors that can affect the liberation and absorption that can be due to the formulations, formulation factors. So under this, we have um, the tablet disintegration, the presence of inert ingredient, or the effect of the solvent you know, to the drug. We also have the solubility. So we have those drugs that are insoluble. We also have those drugs that are slightly soluble. And we also have those drugs that are very soluble. The drug pH you know, can also affect the, the rate of liberation or absorption. So for example, we have those drugs that are basic, acidic, no, weak acid, weak, base, weak base, basic drug, strong acid, or strong basic drugs. So that will also affect the absorption. We also have you know, the concentration. For the factors that are related to the patient, so we have the absorbing surface, the blood flow. So for example, there are those tissues or organs that, are, that have a rich blood supply, so they will have a more absorption of a particular drug. Environmental pH will also affect the absorption because it will affect you know, the ionization of that particular drug. Disease states and interactions with food and other drugs. The next is the distribution. So when we say distribution, that is the rate of perfusion. When we say perfusion, that is the delivery of blood to an organ or tissue. So when we say the uh, high perfusion, so that particular drug has a uh, ample blood supply or enough blood supply. So the distribution is also defined as the process by which the drug will diffuse or is transferred from the blood to the body tissues. So the distribution will be affected by the plasma protein binding, particularly the albumin. Uh, distribution will also um, consider you know, the accumulation of the drug in the tissues. So for example, when the drug is well distributed in the body, so it, it, will, it has the tendency you know, to accumulate in particular tissues. So the higher the distribution, the higher the accumulation of the drug in the tissues. Um, distribution is also um, governed by the ability of the drug to cross the membranes. So we have those specialized membranes in the body which will affect the distribution of a particular drug. So for example, in the brain, we have the blood-brain barrier and in the placenta, we have the placental barrier. And these factors will affect the distribution of the drug in the body. The next after uh, distribution is the metabolism or the biotransformation. So this refers to the chemical conversion or transformation of a drug into a compound which are easier to eliminate. So there are two effects you know, that can be brought about by metabolism or biotransformation. It can uh, transform the drug into a less active metabolite or it can enhance the solubility of that particular drug. So for the primary site of metabolism or biotransformation, this, so this will happen in the liver. So that when we have a liver disease, it will have you know, a great effect on metabolism because it can slow down the metabolism and it can also prolong the effect of that particular drug. Now, because when metabolism is hampered, the ability of the, uh, the ability of the body to excrete that particular drug will be also be uh, hampered. So it will uh, cause, it will result to, to the prolongation of the effect you know, of that particular drug in the body. So under the metabolism, you know, for orally administered drug, we have an important phenomenon known as the hepatic first pass effect or the hepatic first pass metabolism. So this will affect the drugs that are orally administered. The metabolism of the drug by the liver, uh, this uh, first pass effect will refer to the metabolism of the drug by the liver before the drug will reach the systemic circulation. 
So the drug absorbed in the portal circulation must pass through the liver to reach the systemic circulation. Through first pass metabolism, it will reduce you know, the availability of the drug in the systemic circulation. So we have a separate lecture you know, on the hepatic first pass effect on the succeeding chapters. The last step is the elimination or the exclusion. This is the, the primary site for elimination of the drug in the body is in the kidneys. So these are the mechanisms you know, whereby the kidney will excrete or eliminate the drugs in the body. We have the passive glomerular filtration, active tubular transport. We also have the partial reabsorption. The kidney is also important for hemodialysis for it is the process whereby the kidney will filter waste as well as the water from the body. So this is also an important mechanism for the elimination of drugs in the body. When there are, is the presence of renal disease, so just like in the liver, it will also slow down the excretion of the drug in the body and it can also prolong the effect of the drug in the body. So there are many different routes of excretion of drugs in the body. So it, this can include, you know, aside from the urine in the kidney, we also have the bile, you know, the bile from the gallbladder. We also have the sweat. We also have the saliva, the tears, the milk, the exhaled air, and the feces. So by far, the most important excretory organs are the kidneys and the liver. So in the kidneys, excretion of drugs depends on the glomerular filtration, active tubular secretion, and passive tubular absorption. So we have here the diagram of LADME. Now, and this is comprised of liberation, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So as you can see here, Liberation occurs you know, in this part of the stomach. Absorption you know, occurs particularly in humans in the small intestine. Uh, after absorption, so the drug will now be distributed you know, in the different parts of the body. And it will undergo metabolism, you know, particularly in the liver. After metabolism, you know, the drug will undergo excretion and the primary site is the kidney as well as the liver. So LADME processes can be divided into two classes. We have the drug input and the output. So uh, included in the drug input process are the liberation and the absorption. So it will affect you know, the bioavailability of the particular drug. So when we say bioavailability, that will describe you know, the rate and the extent of the drug input. So for those drugs that are administered by IV or intravenous route, they will have a 100% bioavailability, meaning that they will be absorbed you know, completely in the body. Uh, LADME can also be grouped as uh, into uh, the output processes. So under this, we have the distribution, metabolism, and excretion. For those drugs that are administered, no other than the oral route, so that, that is the parenteral route, we follow the ADME uh, scheme or the ADME phenomena. So under this, now we have the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So absorption occurs in the small intestine. No? So in this diagram, we have the, the gut no? in the small intestine, particularly the enterocytes no? of the small intestine. We have here the blood vessel. So the, in the absorption, of course, the drug no, will be absorbed no, in the bloodstream. So after absorption, no, the drug will undergo distribution to the different parts of the body and after that it will after the distribution so it will reach the liver 
So in the liver, it will undergo the metabolic process. So after the metabolism or by transformation, it will now be excreted no, through these mechanisms in the kidney through the urine.